Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today's video is going to be another care guide video or Ants of the US episode. Uh, this time it's going to be on parasitic formica. Now there are three types of parasitic formica. You have the temporary parasite which includes uh, things like formica obscuri, obscure venturis, ulci, exectoides, and uh, rufa. You have the slave makers which you are seeing right here which are uh, not temporary parasites, but they, well, make slaves, they go out and raid other formica colonies for their workers. The next set is Dulotic, which is the combination of the two. So pretty much they are a parasitic species that will go out and get hosts, but they do not require hosts to survive. All of these species found in pretty much the exact same way, which is, well, going in and running into a random host colony. and. Due to that, pretty much all of them can be founded the exact same way, which is just getting them hosts. Formica parasites, however, are probably the easiest out of all of the parasites besides for maybe a Phenogaster tennesseensis to found. It is literally just giving them brood, or if you can try it, uh, giving them workers. Uh, both of which are pretty easy, but one of them is more risky. Obviously, the one involving giving them uh, workers is very risky because they actually have to, you know, try with them. Uh, and kill them, possibly. But before you do all that, you first need to locate a queen, of course, as it does with any other uh, different ant colony. You have to figure out where this species is. Uh, normally, what I figured out is that they oftentimes like to nest inside of fields. Fields like this one on camera. Right now, I'd actually, I'm actually talking to the camera in that video, but I decided to scrap this little bit, so you're just gonna have to deal with this because I don't want to walk all the way back out to this field. This is actually where I ended up catching the vast majority of my par Formica parasites. This is also the field with Formica obscuripes and Formica obscure venturis and Formica ulci. It pretty much has everything from slave makers to temporary parasites. So this is probably the best place you can probably go and get them. Here you can see they have tons of food, there's tons of resources and all that, which makes this a perfect place to go ahead and catch a queen, and for them to nest. After catching a queen, you might be wondering what species it is. Well, IDing a species of uh, parasitic formica is extremely difficult to do. Pretty much it just comes down to uh, what you think it is, or uh, what it resemb uh, roughly resembles. And this queen right here, roughly resembles a Sanguinea group queen, which is a slave-making species. Now, of course, there are Formica parasite species that are easily ideable, such as Formica obscuripes, Formica obscure venturis, and Formica ulci, which can all be easily ID'd just by looking at the queens. But besides from those uh, weird standoffish looking queens, uh, pretty much it's nearly impossible unless you have a microscope in order to actually ID a queen. After catching a queen, you have to figure out what host they take. Now, most Formica parasites will just take Substrecia or something in the Fusca group, but some others are actually more picky, like Formica Cratoni, which aren't exactly the most picky, but they prefer to have a Formica Neogagates group over Formica Fusca group. Formica parasites will fly anytime between uh, June and pretty much into August as well, so you pretty much have a very wide time whenever you're going to be actually catching them. Of course though, uh, it depends on what species you want. Uh, some species fly in June, and those ones are oftentimes uh, Formica obscure ventures, obscure ripes, and stuff like that, and uh, others like the slave makers oftentimes fly in July, August. So, uh, yeah, just make sure that, um, you know what time to catch these ants, pretty much. Now, of course, you're going to have to locate a colony of one of the host species. Most species, as I said, are normally universal, either taking just, uh, Fusca or just Neogagates group, but some, like these ones here, will take all of them. They're pretty much universal in, uh, the species that they will end up accepting. Now, finding a colony can be hard, but actually getting the brood of a colony can be really difficult. As you can see here, I can just easily just flip a rock and boom, there's Formica subsericia, but for others, it is extremely difficult, especially if you're taking from a mound. Here you can see two queens with uh, Formica neogagates uh, group uh, brood, which I ended up getting extremely lucky because I found a colony nesting in wood, and I just broke it open and there was just tons of brood that just came flying out of that log. 
a really good idea if you actually want to end up uh, founding these guys is actually to find one of their host colonies and then put a rock or something that gets really heated up in the uh, summer onto their mound. This will then next year make it so that they will put brood under that rock and will make it insanely easy to actually end up collecting brood for that colony. Now, there are two different methods when it comes to founding Formica parasites. The first method is to just get workers and slowly introduce workers, kind of like Lacius parasites here in the US, where you have to slowly introduce workers and pretty much let the queen kill a bunch of um, uh, workers until they get, you know, their, the colony sent. But that method is actually completely kind of useless, seeing as in you can literally just go ahead and give them brood like I did here. Of course though, I did end up giving some of the uh, colonies that you see here, uh, some host workers as you can see, uh, some of them are actually fighting right there, uh, in order to get a colony sent, but obviously that didn't work and I just ended up removing those workers uh, because really it was kind of useless to do so when they have all that brood that they will be able to open up themselves. Well. Sometimes they can't open it up themselves and then you have to do it manually, which is so annoying, but I mean, hey, what can you do? <laughs> Putting the brood into the tubes is actually also a point of actually being a little bit annoying. And uh, for that, I would actually recommend using an aspirator. If you do have one, uh, you can kinda like put the meshing and like little hole where like you actually like the things actually come into the um the uh, vial and you can put those together and it will make a kind of like vacuum as uh, what they do and you can actually just suck in the uh, <laughs> the brood into the test tube or you could just do it manually which also works very well but uh, it, it's sort of like a little bit of a life hack I guess uh, so yeah here's that queen that you just ended up seeing inside of that other shot with her new uh, brood pretty much. You can see that I gave her quite a lot of larvae. I recommend giving them just as much pupae as physically possible uh, because it really helps them out with uh, founding. Now that we have officially set up this queen with her new uh, soon-to-be host workers, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of my other colonies. Here is one of those colonies that you saw on screen with the Neo Gay Gates brood. You can see that she has callows, very new callows, to the point where some of them literally cannot walk. Um, this is very good. It shows that these uh, are going to be pretty much a very successful uh, colony. That means that very soon they're actually going to get their uh, first meal. I've already fed this queen before because they do not have social stomachs or um, they don't leave. Sorry, they have social stomachs, but they don't leave with like full big uh, social stomachs like they do with uh, claustral formica. So they pretty much are kind of treated like semi-claustral queens, I guess, uh, when they're, when you don't have any hosts. So, yeah. As you can see, though, she is doing absolutely great. She has a number of host workers, many of which are new, but some can, in fact, walk around. Uh, all of that brood is hopefully going to become some new uh, workers for her, and same thing goes with this queen. This queen actually has quite a few hosts as well. I gave her a mix of Neo Gay Gates and Formica Subsericia. This is a little bit of a test though. I want to see if they can actually work together as a weird multi-species uh, type thing. I'm sure that it will actually work out that way, but you know, I really do want to see. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it, subscribe if you're new. Um, please leave me in the comments if I ended up missing anything. Uh, I think I pretty much hit everything how I wanted it to get hit. Wow, my phone went off. Thank goodness it didn't go off for the entirety of this video. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it, subscribe if you're new, uh, check out the Patreon, check out uh, the Discord servers, all that. Um, I have my Discord account also if you want to message me for anything. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.